Hi there. My name is Christopher. And this album is called Story Mode. And I've been trying to capture stories and scenarios and all kinds of things. And I wanted to make this an experience for you. And I have tried doing that by giving you, I believe the word to be, an analogy. You can even call that a metaphor. It's basically writing stories to bring across a message. So I can write about dragons. And then I can read that to you. And I can even make a connection, like draw the line between, you know, the mystical dragon hunt, chasing the dragon. And then I can relate that to sadhana, which is spiritual practice, which means going out there and fucking living it, right? So this song and many people will have second thoughts about whether you can consider this a song or not. But to me, anything can be a song. Who is to say what's a song and what isn't? If I say that's music to me, then that's music. To some people, farting seems to be like music. And in a way, your body is a musician. And so to me, it's also important that I used my body to make this kind of music. And to be honest, I have felt quite stoned, but in a different sense. We say stoned and we mean that we smoked a lot of cannabis. That we're like mellow high, right? Which is not really high, but more like a kind of state of neglect. When you are stoned, it stoned, <laughs> it generally means that you're sitting around doing nothing and just vegetating. And that as a human being means non-existence. Because if you are sitting around stoned, which means, you know, when somebody's looking at you, you may as well be a stone. And that's already the difference how I used psychedelics and how most people use psychedelics. Like some people use psychedelics and maybe they sit at home and, you know, they just lose themselves in bliss. And then they meditate and, you know, oh, felt so good, right? That to me is the equivalent of being stoned. It's using a substance, whatever substance you use, right? It's always a substance to make yourself into a object that does not move. While for me it was always essential to move. What I really wanted was to move. I wanted to go out and hike. But I discovered that when I tried to do that alone, there were so many things, right? I like to say obstacles in my mind while it would probably be more accurate to say emotional baggage that was holding me back from doing so. Creating content 
is what helped me to do so. And now, when I started talking about this in my mind, that I wanted to record this song, I keep calling it a song, I was listening to a later recording from Ramdas, where I could sense, or I had the feeling when I was listening to him, that he was, at some stage, his guru had left, and he kind of felt left alone, and he talked about using psychedelics. And I could kind of relate to the way he talked, because he felt bitter. And now I wanted to call this song. I tried to help them, but they rejected me. And that's something that really stings. When you are living your life, and you are trying to bring to people a message because you have been chosen by life for some reason to deliver a message and nobody wants to hear it because they don't want to give you that right they don't want to give you that they don't want to listen to you because they are all too comfortable and that's a story in itself, comfort. Because I have realized that the only thing that makes me feel alive is actively suffering. Going out there and chasing dragons one after another, leaving my comfort zone, putting myself out there and hacking my own life. Because every person that I try to engage with, so far, has rejected me. That goes from people who considered themselves to be friends, but ended up throwing me onto the streets. And it was often due to the topic of money. While they always said money wasn't the issue, in the end, it seemed like it was. And I always took it personal. I took it personal that people that I chose to be right my friend or my lover or whatever, right? The people that I put onto a pedestal to worship, to look up to, they all crumbled before my eyes. And why is that? Well, I put them there to make my life easier. Because it was easier to me to let somebody else do the work than to do it myself. Until I got to the point where there was nobody left to hold on to. Because everybody I had tried to hold on to had turned their back on me. And then I kept holding on to them. And I did help them, or it, I thought I did, by telling them the truth, right? The truth is always relative. My truth is different than your truth. But if you're telling somebody that doesn't want to listen, that they're not listening, then they are going to say, I am listening, but you're not listening. And the message of that is, I am listening, but you're not listening, because we're actually both not listening to each other. I'm not hearing what you're saying, because I'm busy pretending that I want to help you. And whether or not that makes sense, I don't know. I just know that I'm saying it because I've tried helping people and I was telling myself that's what they need, right? That's what they really need, right? They need this. 
Or do I need it? Sometimes it's better to leave people alone. Even if it hurts. And to just do your own thing. And the thing is... Right? I cannot say always who I'm going to meet again. But I also started to... reject the possibility of reaching out myself because I know now I can reach out but I also know in what kind of position that places me because I know what I have to give and the people I've met along the way they know what I have to give and that's like serious business so if you reach out to me you have to be aware what you're going to get. Like, I'm not playing around here. I'm literally fighting for my life. So if you reach out to me, it's gonna be serious. And so the people that I've met along the way, right, they came to me and they wanted to fool around. They wanted to play. You know, there was somebody that invited me to come to Amsterdam. And when I came there and I wanted to stay, there were all these conditions. And I just wanted to stay there to help them. But they rejected me. And then there was this young woman, right, that thought she looked into my eyes and saw her husband. But when I, when I wanted to give her me, she rejected me. She stopped talking to me. So you can wonder along the way, what am I to think of this? What am I to think of this? Am I really that terrible? And the answer to that question is no. Maybe you were too desperate to help people because you really want to help people. And maybe who you should have helped first was you. Because to help people, because you want them to help you, is definitely the road to damnation. Because what you're going to understand is that if you keep helping people, they will reject you. Because they have to reject you. Because if you keep helping people, you're kind of looking down on them. You think they cannot do it themselves. And that means eventually they will have to start looking down on you. Or they're gonna push you out. And then you have to ask yourself, what kind of people do you want to have in your life? Do you want to have people that can help themselves? And will you allow them to do so? And the only way they can do so is if you let them. So, if you've been rejected over and over by women, by people in general, that you reached out to, and every time you reach out to them, they push you away and they say, no thank you, they say it with their deeds or whatever, right? I've had many women that after they came into contact with me, they could not see from what place I was talking to them. They just thought I was awful. Because I was shouting, I was screaming, because I was in fear. And when they saw me, they thought, oh, that must be, right, a good husband or something. Well, and they tried to take me lightly. They wanted me to do their work because you know many women that I meet are somewhat in this kind of place I'm a very beautiful and strong woman yeah that's what they think that's what they tell themselves I'm a very beautiful and strong woman that's living on a high horse and men should love me and so some of these women they saw me maybe they saw my long hair at the time or maybe they saw that I had beard right maybe they saw that I was somewhat muscular somewhat spiritual somewhat 
you know, living my life. And then what they wanted was me to take care of them. They didn't really care that maybe I needed somebody to also take care of me, right? They wanted me to be that kind of husband that provides them with a sense of security. They wanted me to be like a father kind of person, while they weren't fit to be mothers. So, you know, it's like placing the responsibility for your dilemma into the hands of another person and to think it's okay to do that. You have to take responsibility for yourself. And that means I have to take responsibility for myself. And surely I haven't done that all my life. I've met people and I saw something in them and then I was clinging to them and I thought, you know, oh, I really love that person. But what I really loved about them was the idea that I could, you know, lay in bed to them and feel like everything's all right. But it wasn't. And that, of course, shows in emotional outbursts, in lack of motivation, in fatigue, that I do not manage to do what I actually want to do without somebody to push me. So what do you do? You push yourself. Because eventually you either kill yourself or you do something about it. So it's either, okay, I'm going to commit suicide and choose death, or you say, okay, fuck it, I'm gonna give life a shot, and I'm going to fully live, and I'm going to emerge myself in life, and I'm going to jump back on the horse, and I'm going to train, because what I really understood about life is that I was getting weak. And I was placing the responsibility for myself in the hands of psychedelics. But psychedelics are just a method, right? It's like thinking that buying a car will get rid of your depression. When you have the car, suddenly you're afraid to lose it. Right? It's like, I need cannabis to feel good. So if cannabis isn't there, you think you feel shit. But you already, you know, you placed yourself in the position where you cling to cannabis as a vehicle to your happiness. Well, if your vehicle breaks or it doesn't do what it used to do anymore, you feel lost, you feel terrible, you feel suicidal. So if you go into a relationship and you think this relationship, you know, is going to change my life, it's going to get rid of all my problems because now I have somebody who's soft, right? Now there's somebody that I can kiss and I can have sex with and, you know, I can use to escape from all my problems. Because sex is bliss. But how long does sex last? Generally. An hour? You know, in the beginning you're gonna have lots of it. But after a while it's going to become boring so what are you doing else then you know how do you get to bliss what are your methods you know what kind of work do you put in as an individual to get to the place of love that you actually want your partner to bring you to so if both of you are doing this it becomes a drag and that that's what it means if you say you are a strong person. Then you also have to manage on your own until somebody else comes along that also manages on their own. So to say I'm a strong person, but to keep looking for a partner that makes you feel better makes no sense. So if you are a strong person, then you have to prove it to life and to yourself that you can do it on your own. And that you stop chasing other people to make yourself feel better. 
and that you push through no matter what. That you're always going to do what feels right, whether it scares you or whether maybe sometimes, right, it's like super easy. You know, sometimes smoking a joint can be scary. If you know, you know, something's coming that you have to deal with. And so smoking a joint can be scary. But it can also be an escape. So that's for you to decide. I realized that there had to be times in my life where I said no to all kinds of psychedelics. There are times in my life where I don't drink any coffee. And then there were times in my life where I drank a lot of coffee. Now I drink coffee occasionally when I feel like it. Because I've boiled it down to... Ah, this feeling means I should drink coffee. This feeling means, you know, I should sleep now. This feeling means my body needs to go outside and run barefoot in the snow. You know, I have learned to distinguish all these kinds of feelings so I know what to do in what kind of situation. I have worked out certain methods and sometimes when I'm really heavy I just allow myself to be heavy and I just sit with that until it's over. And then I pick myself up again. Even if I told myself, you know, I'm not gonna do shit anymore. And the next day suddenly I'm making another album. Without knowing where this is going to lead me. You see, so... The trick is to figure it out on your own. And to see it as a blessing and a chance to have the time to figure it out because if I look at the people that surround me not everybody has the chance because some of them suddenly are pregnant or they are stuck in some kind of relationship that they feel like they cannot get out of so I say you know that's what life is you gotta accept that and when you meet the person already that you feel like you want to marry and you don't have time to figure it out on your own, well, then that's that. But for me, life happened that way. Because of the choices that I made, but also the choices that other people made. And for some reason, life happened in such a way that I ended up creating all kinds of content. Because people kept rejecting me and rejecting me and rejecting me. And while I thought I was helping them, in a way, for sure, they were helping me. Because if I wouldn't have done all these things, I wouldn't feel that way about them. And whether or not I will meet any of the people ever again that I'm talking about here, right? I don't know that. I literally don't know anymore. And that, in a way, is already a blessing, because I don't know what happens tomorrow, right? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I really don't know. And that's a scary place. But that's the best thing to work with, because if I don't know what happens, I need to become flexible. And so, I need to work on that to live Maybe like a wolf would, right? Okay, is it gonna rain tomorrow? I don't know. You know, am I gonna have food tomorrow? I don't know. Am I going to be attacked tomorrow? I don't know. Suddenly life becomes like a challenge, right? When am I going to get up tomorrow? Well, when I wake up. Because then, you know, you don't set an alarm. That's a challenge. To get up anyway, even though you don't have to. Right? That's like being self-employed. Like, what are you going to do? Where are you going to get your motivation? Well, basically anything you feel is your motivation. Because anything that you feel is raw energy. Right? It can be rage. It can be whatever suffering is. It can be sadness. You know, like all that kind of anger, hatred. You know, even bliss. So I don't, you know, I try to see bliss sometimes, but I don't want to lose myself in it anymore. 
Because if I lose myself in bliss, I'm eventually going to lose it. You know, that's how it is. I'm gonna get lost in bliss. And... That's gonna have you living life on a high horse again. So, it's to kind of remember that it's, you know, you're walking on a tightrope. You're walking on a tightrope, and that means you have to keep your focus. And that means you're walking on a tightrope, and maybe on the left side is a, right, is a stairway to hell, and maybe on the right side is a stairway to heaven. But in the end, you can hold hell and heaven in the same place. And maybe sometimes you need to go into hell to just look at it. And maybe sometimes you need to go into heaven to look at that. And whether, whatever you need, you kind of pick it out. And that is the meaning for me to walk your path. It's to get comfortable in heaven and to get comfortable in hell and to see it as the same place. Because sometimes, you know, I can be so grateful. But I also realize that if I'm too grateful, you know, it starts to annoy me. If I walk around and I'm like, oh, it's all so beautiful. That's kind of what destroys my warrior, you know, I'm gonna push through mentality. And I've really tried to be like whatever good is. But the truth is, I'm half bad. I'm half bad and half good. And I really have the feeling that whatever good is, is basically trying to keep me from getting really bad. And whatever bad is, is trying to keep me from getting really good. Because if I'm too good, I feel like it's really boring. And if I'm too bad, you know, that's also kind of boring. Because, you know, I don't want to be predictable. I want to be as flexible as, yeah, as water, right? You become what you need to be in a situation, right? So if it's really cold, water freezes. If it's really hot, water condenses. And, you know, I want to be able to shift according to the situation. So if somebody comes and attacks me, you know, then I have to be a bit bad, right? You know, I don't want to hurt them, but, you know, if they try something, I'm sh surely going to show them my claws. And if somebody comes and they're like in a really delicate spot, okay, I'm going to show them maybe a bit more compassion. But not in a pussy kind of way, more like, all right, you know, that's how it is. And so that's for me, right? That's how it feels like for me, because I've tried really being an asshole, and I've tried really being an angel, and both didn't work. It worked to a certain extent, but in the end, you know, I wasn't, you know, I was neither of them. I'm not the angel and I'm not the devil, but I can be both of them when I feel like it, right? So, you know, I tried to help them, but they rejected me. That's like taking it personal, you know, you're trying to help someone and they reject you. What does that mean? You're trying to help someone and they reject you. So you need others to accept your help? Doesn't that mean that you want them to help you by making you feel like you can help other people? Right, so the other way is to accept that in order to fulfill your life's mission, you want to help people. And for that, you figure out what you want to do and then you try to give that to people. But you cannot do that by asking them. No, what you do is, you look at 
the world and at the people and you realize people don't know what they want. So the only thing you can really do to help anyone is to do what you want to do. And then to show them, you know, I really like my life because I'm doing what I want to do. And then people realize, wait, that's possible. I can figure out what I want. Like there's a way and a method to figure out what I want. And then I can adjust my life to only do what I want. You know, which is certainly far from being easy, but in a sense it is, because it's the only thing that makes sense. Because the other road is, you know, to figure out what people want you to do and then you're trying to give them that. And then you're going to realize if you give people what they say they want or they think they want, they will never be happy because that's not what they wanted. Because they don't know what they want. Because they never ask themselves the question. And that means that when they live their life the way they do, that that's actually what they want. For whatever reasons they have, that shouldn't be any of your concern. And that means when I try to live my life by helping other people, then I'm not living my life, then I'm trying to live their life the way they say they want to live it, only they don't put in the work to live it like that. But you can't give that to anyone. But you can give it to yourself if you are seri serious about doing it. So, the only way you can help anyone is by helping yourself fulfill your dream. And then sharing what you can, right? To share what you learned in your life. And if you're not the sharing kind of type, you just live your life and people are going to see it and then they can say, oh, like your life really sorted itself out. What did you do, you know? So you continued living and people will start to realize that and then they can ask you something. So in the end, it's really about figuring it out for yourself without pushing it on other people and then allowing people to come to you without clinging to them like they need to come and you know do whatever they have to spend time with my content well they will do it you know when they feel like it and when you've got something to teach and when you learn to teach it in a way that other people may understand it and that's really the trick to understand how to communicate to others and in which way to pack your message. And that means you have to stay true to who you are and to what you want to teach. Because not everybody is really a teacher. But if you're desperately trying to teach, because you think, you know, as a teacher I'm better off, it might not work. But it's different if you think this is what I really want to do. You know, I want to teach what I've learned. Because that's what helps people the most. To do it myself and then to talk about what I've done instead of just talking about what I've read or something. Right? So I think that's really what I wanted to say in this. That in the end it's up to you. You have to figure it out and make it a reality and you know if you would ask me I would say yeah sure I have days where I really hate giving anything where I feel so burned out that you know I cannot create anything well then I don't because if I would try to create something Although I really don't feel like it. Well, that means I'm overexerting myself because I think I'm helping people. But then I'm neglecting myself. So to which cost can I create content to help other people if I start hating it in the process? Because if I choose I want to do that, you know, I should at least somehow like it. Or at least I should know what I have to do in order to create, to get to a place where I know 
okay, this is the place where I want it to be. And that's a challenge, because, yeah, sure, I'm fighting with what you may consider to be depression. Which to me is just emotions and feelings and this, you know, thing of heaviness. And I've had that all my life. All I had to figure out was how to find balance and what I wanted to do with my life. And that's really the essential question that got me going. What do I want? And then I figured that out. And then I realized, okay, it's a conscious decision. I know now what I want, so I have to sort out all the stuff that people expect of me to make their life easier. Now it's more like a decision, you know. I feel like people expect something from me. And then I ask myself, okay, do I want to give them that? Does it help them to give them that? Does it help me? And when it doesn't, you know, I can always say no. And then the person might get angry, but then I say, you know, well, helping you doesn't help me, because if I help you, who's helping me? You're not gonna take the time to help me create content. So why should I help you right now, right? Why should I take the time to help you if I also need help? But you're not willing to help me because, you know, you cannot help me create content. Because I want to create content. You don't want to create content. But you want me to help you. When I have no time to help anyone at the moment but myself. And that means in a way you have to sacrifice the time you spend with other people. That use you to make themselves feel better. You sacrifice that to gain something which is time with yourself. And that's when you start realizing that there's a friend out there that is inside of you. And while you were always looking for somebody to love, like a person, you know, to go on hikes with, you suddenly realize, why would I ever go on hikes with anybody but myself again? Because now I don't have to put up with people talking about whatever all the time, you know, I can just be quiet. I can just walk and be quiet. And for the first time in my life, I can actually enjoy being quiet. And if there's something to say, I can say it to myself while walking. And that's what I found. This place where it's actually nice to be on my own and where being with people is the challenge you know to still put myself out there to share what I have found with others instead of to just keep it for myself and be selfish because you know when you spend a lot of time in your own suddenly you have something to share because you're filling your own cup but who are you going to feed with whatever you're filling your cup with so if you fill your cup with anger, all you can feed to people is anger. But if you fill your cup with love, because you learn how to transform anger into love, I mean, that's something that can really nourish people. So, having said that, all these images that I took, I took during a hike. And I only took the pictures that I felt like I want to take them. And I took these pictures, you know, that's really how it says it in my mind, you know, take it. And sometimes it says, leave that. Because if you take every picture, it's like, maybe you don't want every experience, right? It's like, you know, I don't want the experience of taking cocaine. I just don't want that. Because cocaine, to me, it's like a dead end. It's just turning you into more of an asshole. You know, I don't have to see myself as more of an asshole because, you know, I've already seen that. And... So... First, I didn't really want to take pictures. But then I thought, you know what? You know, because that's what I want to do. I want to promote 
the kind of life that I'm living. And for that, I can walk around and take pictures, but not all the time. Because if I do it all the time, I'm gonna hate it. So it should be something special, right? It should be something special to make music. It means I have to take the time for it. And to not just do it because I think, oh god, I have to give more than I've already given. Right? And that's of course the trap. If I start making pictures for Instagram, you know, I might, I might end up feeling trapped about making pictures. And then, you know, I just rip my leg off. Because I'm trying to create more and more pictures, even though I don't feel like it. And that's exactly why, where I began to intervene. If I don't feel like making music at the moment, you know, I start writing books again. And now I can kind of like season my day with all kinds of things that I could do, because I know, you know, I've worked on them enough that I figured out how to do them. I know how to do crochet, I know how to cook, right? I know how to make videos, I know how to take pictures, I know how to record episodes, I know how to make music, right? I can play some kind of instrument, you know, to a certain degree, but I also realize that, especially with music, you know, that still needs some work. So I also have to work on developing my skills. So sometimes I stop going slacklining. I stop going slacklining because at the moment there's something else that I want to do. So I don't do slacklining for a while. But then I do other things, right? Then I work on other skills. So I go climbing more. I go hiking more. I make sure that I do something. At the moment I don't really feel like doing planks. Because I feel kind of weak in my arms. So what can I do instead? I can strengthen my legs. Right? And when I've strengthened my legs adequately, maybe I'll find the strength to also do planks again. And maybe at the moment it's just too boring to do planks, so instead, you know, okay, I'll go climbing. And I'll hike there, and then I go climbing. So, you know, there's like so many things you can season your day with. But you, of course, have to figure it out. I mean, doing artwork was real hell in the beginning. Because I had to work myself through all these feelings of, you know, you know, I'm shit at art and I hate myself, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And now I can basically just sit down and say, okay, I'm going to do art today. You know, I'm going to start drawing and I'm going to collect six or seven images, you know, and then I'm going to make a session and put that online. You know, sometimes I don't really like it anymore. And the reason I don't really like it anymore is fairly simple. Because to just keep producing stuff for Instagram to me is kind of pointless. You know, I don't want to be like a machine that just produces and produces and produces. So I also have to have some kind of message. And that's why to me it's really a great sanctuary, you know, in myself to say, okay, I'm producing content. But for what, right? I'm making an image, and what am I going to do with it? Ah, I'm going to do more stuff with it. I'm going to use that image as a cover for my albums. I'm going to use that image for one of my books. I'm going to use that image for one of my videos. Okay, you know, and in that sense, because just making art isn't it for me. I also want to do other things. And of course, in a way, everything then can be considered art. But I'm talking about art in terms of paintings. You know, but there's too much stuff that people can interpret, right? And, you know, then they see your artwork and then they think, oh, well, you know, I want to buy that. And then they stick it into their house and then they think, you know, oh, well, that's really special. You know, that's not what I want. I want to give people content that helps them to find themselves. 
So it's not about making art and then selling it, it's about creating content that helps people and because it's valuable to them and it helps them, you know, they actually feel like maybe giving something back. That's how I believe, you know, it's like, you know, in a way I help you and then you can help me, you know. If you want to, if you have something to give, you know, give it. Today we're living in times, you know, it's about money. I'm creating content, you know, I will keep creating content. So if you're interested in that, feel free. All the information is on my website. Um, you know, it's always a delicate place to say that, but you know, I'm just gonna mention it anyway so that you know if you ever feel like giving anything back, you can, and that means, you know, you can buy a book or you can donate money. Now that's as simple as it gets, and you know, I'm not gonna make it any more awkward, so I'll just stop talking about it. Um, but yeah, that's just the world we live in. If you do something, you ask for money. Why do you ask for money? Because you know, I want to be of service, and that eventually means, okay, I'd like, of course, to have my own place so that I can do other things as well. Because my goal isn't to just work through the internet. You know, I want to engage with people and show them one thing or another if they want to see it. And to get to that place, I'm working and you know that's why I'm so resolute because I know what I want but I also know what I have to do in order for it to become a reality and if I don't know it today right if I don't know it today or maybe I didn't know it yesterday but I, then I'm going to make sure to put in the work you know that I will remember or figure it out what the next step is. What is the next step? You know, if I feel stuck, I'm gonna ask that question. What is the next step? What am I not hearing? And somehow I'm going to stumble out into the open, smell fresh air again and realize, okay, you know, that's where, that's where I wanted to be. That's where I needed to be, you know, and somehow I figured it out. And that means you have to put in the work.